So we're gonna do things a little differently today. If I look tired, I am. Uh, I just got off work, but I'm gonna go over my paycheck routine with you really quick. And we're also gonna talk about some more things that have just been on my mind lately that hopefully help you become better with your finances. So we're gonna jump straight into it. The first place my money went to by default was my 401k. So before any of my money got taxed, $412.25 of my income went straight into my 401k and my company does match at 50%. So they did contribute an extra $206.13. And of course, y'all know I made a promise to myself that I would hit $7,000 in my Roth IRA by the end of this year. So I've been putting in $700 into my Roth IRA every single month for the past few months. And so now this month is no different. I put $700 of my last paycheck into my Roth IRA. And if you were curious about those two accounts, I'll bring them up right now and show you pictures of them here on the screen. My 401k is at $90,116.14. And my Roth IRA is at $20,435.53. So my accounts are still doing very well. It's been a very good year for the stock market for what my money's in right now. And just so you know, my Weeble account has been growing as well. It's at $34,561.83. I took a screenshot, but the market's open right now. So the numbers are fluctuating. So the number you see might be slightly different than what I just said. But as of right now, my account is up 141.54%. And remember, I've only owned this account since the year of 2020. But this month I decided that I wasn't putting any money towards that because I have another investment that I will be talking about here in a second. But first, I want to let you know something. It has been a while since I've been back home in North Carolina. I'm in Nevada right now. So in November, I will be taking a visit, a nice visit back home in North Carolina just before Thanksgiving. And, and I did spend some of my paycheck on a plane ticket. And part of the reason I want to bring that up is because obviously I wanted to buy a plane ticket. I wanted to see my family and I will always want to see them because they're so far away. They're 36 hours away if it's by car, seven hours away by plane. So the thing is, when I get to buying certain things, whether it's a plane ticket, whether it's, you know, something nice for myself or anything having to do with myself, I'm noticing that sometimes I have a hard time wanting to do it because like I want to do the thing or I want the thing, but I won't want to spend money for it. But when it comes to the stock market, and I know it's like 100% for the future, it's, you know, I have very bullish, which means very optimistic views on what that's going to hold. And even though I might have the same optimistic views for, you know, going to see my family, having that plane ticket, buying something nice for myself, enjoying myself, relaxing, it's like, I'm associating those things with relaxation, fun, and everything else. I'm associating that with me having a hard time spending money. And it seems like it's almost the opposite of how most people spend their paycheck money. Outside of bills, once that's over with, most of us are ready to spend money, have fun, you know, just chill. For me, it seems like my chill switch has been going, you know, further down as time goes by, it's because it's like I get hungrier for success. So this was something that stuck out to me this month in particular. So I was like, I need to start relaxing a little more. I need to slow down a little more. I need to pace myself because the simple fact that I'm a human and I need rest and I deserve to enjoy my life and relax. And it doesn't even mean that I have to overspend to do so. But the crazy thing is, as y'all know, I've had the worst habit with DoorDash throughout the year. Uh, it really hasn't been a big deal. As you saw, my net worth has still went up regardless of my spending. But that doesn't mean it's responsible spending. But I didn't think twice about that because I guess I correlate food with survival, in which case that is true. But DoorDash food, half of it ain't real food. I'm going to just be honest with you. So that's obviously a comfort thing, but because I'm associating it with survival, I made it okay in my mind. But anything else where it revolves around me enjoying myself or being around people I want to be around, it's like, ah, do I got it like that to be spending money on a plane ticket? And it's, it's the craziest thing because I've spent way less on that plane ticket than I have averaged in spending in DoorDash every single month. And this video isn't a spending video. It's more of a things I'm investing in when it comes to 
my most recent paycheck. And I know my paycheck routine videos are typically about only things that I'm spending money on that make me more money, which is what we'll get to here in a second. But I just want to let you know, my habits seem to be the polar opposite of your average person. So for example, when I get a promotion, when I get a raise, the last thing I'm thinking about is a new car. I'm thinking I'm going to keep the car I've had since I was 20 years old. I'm 29 now. And I'm going to I'm going to keep driving that car to the wheels fall off, basically. And I'm going to keep my expenses as low as possible. And that gives me so much room to do things like spend money on DoorDash or buy a plane ticket or do things freely without having to go into debt. You know what I'm saying? To do those things. But also it gives me the option to make passive income and to continue building my income. So for example, because of the time and the money that I spent investing into this channel and getting the skill set up to speak in front of a camera, to get the lighting right, to understand what the audience likes, what the audience doesn't like, how the YouTube algorithm works as a whole. I've spent thousands of dollars, but guess what? This YouTube channel has made me thousands of dollars. And so this month I made an extra $312.50. But you know what? Before, it was a dream to be able to make my first $100 extra a month outside of work. And it's, it's kind of passive. Like, if I stop posting on YouTube, which I will not start doing, I'm not going to stop posting on YouTube. But if I did, I would still be getting an extra, like, $150 to $200 a month. Like, pretty much all of 2020 or half of 2022 and a good chunk of last year, I did not post anything and I was still collecting $200 on average a month. And that's not a ton, but some people, they could use an extra $200 a month for necessities. Yeah, I could invest that extra $200 a month. There's so much you can do with a $200 a month. What I'm saying is there's been so many times where I've been hesitant to spend money when it comes to enjoying myself. And there's been so many times where people who watch my channel have been hesitant to spend money when it comes to bettering their lives and investing in themselves. There is nothing wrong with investing in yourself. And you might feel the same way that I feel when it comes to comfort and relaxation, when it comes to investing in yourself. The thing is, you gotta bet for yourself because you'll be surprised at what will happen when you do bet on yourself. And you will have second guesses. You will have certain moments where you're just like, man, should I really be doing this? Do I have any business doing this? Maybe I'm just not cut out for doing this. That right there is that negative self-talk. That's what I call loser slash failure talk because the thing is, none of us are different. We were all born pretty much the same way when it comes to what we can do in this world and what we can offer. And if you give up, that's the only way you'll ensure that you fail. So I've offered certain things on this channel. For example, I've offered the $100,000 action plan, which lays out a legit action plan for you to make your first $100,000 in liquid net worth. I've also created a spreadsheet for you that automatically calculates your budget for you. It's the easiest budgeting template you will ever have. It's called the Smart Money Calculator. You could download both of those in the description. But a lot of people have visited the site and clicked off because they were like, ah, it costs money. Well, look, all this info, I have 300 and something videos on YouTube. You can learn a lot of stuff from me for free, but the thing is, even though my channel is free, I could easily condense my whole channel into some sort of course, charge hundreds of dollars for it, and it would be very valuable, but sometimes free information just isn't as appreciated. It's like if your parents buy you a car versus you buying your own car, you're gonna appreciate it differently when you buy it because your money went into it, you worked for it, and you put in some sweat for it. When somebody gives you something, it's like, oh, it's a gift. Like you might cherish it, but maybe not the same way as when you buy it yourself. And that's the best analogy I could think of at this time because my, I, I just, you know, I worked a 10 hour shift and um, my brain is not functioning at 100% right now, but I can still talk and have a conversation with you because, you know, I'm still, it's about on for conversation. So anyway, I don't think that every human on earth should buy my stuff, but I am saying, for example, my stuff is not that expensive. For example, I had the $100,000 action plan on sale for $7. Three people bought it. I did put that extra money straight into my savings. Cool. My coaching and mentoring program 
it doesn't cost that much money to get on one session with me and y'all best believe as this channel starts to blow up and I become more successful the price is going to go up because then I'm going to have less time to offer to the amount of people that I want to offer it to so there's a lot of excuses that we give ourselves when it comes to oh uh, well I don't want to buy that or you know I don't know if it's going to work for me look it's going to work if you do. If you take the time to put your money in the smart money calculator, it's going to calculate everything for you. It's going to tell you how much money per year you're allowed to spend. I say allowed very loosely because it's what you're setting a standard for yourself for. So what you're allowed to spend. And if you stick to that number, guess what? You'll be able to save a lot more for yourself. And you'll be able to invest a lot more for yourself. And you'll be able to start to see a future where you're financially stable and then, you know, financially independent. Like you're going to just keep improving and growing from there. But a lot of us won't think twice about doing what I do, spending money on DoorDash. And then it just adds up and adds up. Next thing you know, it's about $400 on some DoorDash. But you'll hesitate to spend money $7 on a $100,000 action plan. It's crazy. You're literally trading a few dollars for a plan that will help you get to $100,000 with step by steps. I just created that term or that phrase, but you know, it doesn't have to be grammatically correct. I, I wrote a book, I know grammar. Right now, we don't need to focus on things I misspeak on. We need to focus on the message behind this video. And so the message is this, don't hesitate when it comes to your future. Even if you feel like you might be wasting money, or whatever because here's the thing I've always betted on myself that's one thing I've done since day one the AC just closed my door for me how crazy is that one thing that I have always done I've always betted on myself I didn't care if people thought I was overconfident I didn't care if people thought I was arrogant cocky whatever word you want to use I never cared because I always knew that there was something there I knew that I would have some sort of result in some sort of way I just had to figure it out and so when I was 21 years old I was networking, I was seeking mentorship, seeking coaching, I was spending $600 a month, and it went straight down the drain, and I thought, man, like, this is so great, like, I'm spending $600, I'm learning from this person, learning from this person, I'm going from coach to mentor, and I was in a MLM thing uh, with, with Amway, and it didn't work out, but the thing was, all the stuff I ended up learning and the person I became out of doing all that ended up being so invaluable that I had the mind to become an entrepreneur, create this YouTube channel, create a business, write a book, uh, while also building my way up at work and getting promotions and learning how to invest. Like I, I did all these things because I bet it on myself. Not all of those things worked out. The Amway sure didn't work out, but everything else has been working out. I've been building a name for myself within my career. I've been able to build my net worth. I've been able to allow my money to grow. I've figured out how to invest and how to continue to get those results on a consistent basis, regardless of what the market is looking like. I mean, I'm not bragging on myself, but I am saying this is a result of my decisions. And partially it's a strength that I, I wanted to shy away from kind of the comfort things and the leisure and relaxation. But at the same time, now I'm coming to terms with, okay, I need to keep my stress levels down. I need to continue doing what I'm doing and just not obsessing over certain things or getting too lost in certain things. I used to obsess over my YouTube views. Cause I feel like I have all these subscribers, 17,000 plus, almost 18,000 but the views are like in the hundreds. I used to beat myself up for that all the time, but now I'm just like, look, the, the value is here for the value. So whoever gets value from these videos and over the short or long term, this is gonna live on no matter what. And so like all the money I've spent on YouTube has came back to me repetitively. Like I've probably spent three or $4,000 just on knowledge and cameras and equipment and things like that for my YouTube channel. But guess what? It's more than paid for itself. My YouTube channel is profitable. When it comes to YouTube specifically, there is zero overhead. It's just me, my camera, my mic, which I paid cash for, and my laptop, which I also paid cash for, and, and you know, Adobe Premiere Pro. You know what I'm saying? Like, the overhead is virtually zero. So don't doubt yourself to the point where you're like, ah, oh, well, this costs money. Yeah because then you'll appreciate what's given to you and you'll actually use it. I'm already making money. So now going back to the $312.50 that I made from YouTube, 
it went straight into my checking account and that was pretty much that and y'all know the usual i put 500 dollars in my savings account every single month i split some of it between my savings and some of it between my checking because again building up that buffer and i also decided to invest another 300 dollars into you've probably seen the shorts on my video and everything i've been working with this guy named simon and then he's just a great guy he actually produced a bunch of shorts for me for two months straight maybe even a little more than that two months and like a week and some change and it's been 100 percent free good quality and as you've seen it's actually helped build up my channel a little bit and it's gotten a lot of people who wouldn't have normally come to this channel straight to this channel because the shorts feed the way the algorithm works i just pop up they get curious they click on the actual video my analytics tell me all these things and boom new subscriber boom new viewer so that i thought was valuable so i decided to go ahead and invest in his business and what i mean by that is specifically for this channel i want him making shorts for me and we're going to do this for three months we're going to see how everything goes and i'm pretty excited about it but the thing is I'm not shy. Like it could be three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. Like it just depends on how my budget is looking for the month. But like I'm not shy about investing myself. I might hesitate. I might have to well, let me think about that. But I'm never gonna be like, ah, nah, I can't do that. No, you have to. One constant when it comes to rich people, millionaires, people in the six-figure range, all that stuff, they all invest in themselves in, in one way or another. Right now, I'm doing it in multiple ways, but in one way or another. You're only in your 20s one time. I'm still in my 20s. I don't have a family yet. I'm not married yet. Like I want to go hard right now because I'm building a life for when I'm married, for when I have kids, for when anybody in my family ever needs my help. I want to be able to do those things. So that's why I do these paycheck routine videos. They might seem like, okay, these are like routine things. Okay, a little here, a little there, but you don't understand. Like if you watch from the first video in the Wealth Journey series and you look at it now, you'll you'll notice that it's only been, I think I started my Wealth Journey series in February. I don't think I quite did in January, but anyway, it's only been like eight months and there have been very big results in those eight months. So these little incremental things that I'm putting towards my goals and towards what I'm wanting and the times where I go abnormally harder on a goal than I normally would just because I have more money that month or whatever the case is, you have to understand, yeah, it might seem kind of boring where it's like, okay, he got paid, he put money in his 401k, okay, he did $500 in his Roth IRA, okay, now he's bumping it up to $700 a month. These little adjustments that I'm making these little shifts that I'm making, they're for a reason and they're very well calculated. I'm putting myself in a position where I don't have to work for the rest of my life. And what I mean by that is everybody's working towards retirement, but half of us won't be able to make it to retirement simply because we're not making the decisions right now to put enough money in to be in the stock market long enough to then grow long enough and compound long enough so that you don't have to worry about working when you're 60. I'm like, forget all that mess. When I'm 40, I want to be sitting at the house if I want to. But knowing me, I'll be working out, you know, doing Muay Thai somewhere just because I like martial arts. I like fighting. I like working out. I, I like endurance. I like strength training. I like all this. But the thing is, I look at people around me, they'll be older, they'll be in their 50s, 40s, whatever, some in, the, in their 30s. They look so miserable because they don't have the level of control that they would like to have in life. And it's because of the financial decisions they make. It's because they bought the house because they thought, oh my gosh, I went to school, I got this degree, I got this good job, I'm gonna buy a house. Okay, now you're house poor because you can barely keep up with your house payment. You also got these expensive behind cars in the driveway looking successful. Look, I'd rather be successful than look successful. That's all I'm saying. So when you see my paycheck routine, Every bit of it is 100% intentional. None of this is by an accident or anything like that. And I find my paycheck routine 10 times more important than just my regular spending habits. I say that now because, because earlier I was so frugal. I was penny pension. And once I started making a certain amount of money, I knew, okay, now I can invest, now I can save. Boom, I'm gonna start putting money away. I'm gonna start going towards those. As soon as I started seeing those results that I wanted to see, I was like, you know what? Forget being frugal. That ain't who I am. 
I'm not a, you know, flashy, spender, luxurious type of person either. But at the same time, I like to have a good time. I like to eat good and I like to work out. And those things cost money around here. So you know what? Being frugal ain't going to cut it for some of my life goals that I have. So that means money in the background has to be growing. That means I have to have systems in place. That means I have to have things that are printing money for me when I'm about sleeping. And you know what? I don't have a problem with it because my book is earning me money. My YouTube channel is earning me money. My mini products are earning me money. My stocks, my job, you get what I'm saying? So I don't have a problem spending money to become more knowledgeable to become more successful, to then be able to produce. Because, you know, I heard this one quote and it really bothered me. It was like, the if uh, basically it was like, how much money do you make? The person said how much money they made. And then they said, well, how much money do you wanna be making? You know, a million dollars, that's like the standard type of thing that people say. And the person that asked the question was like, well, you know, what's your most expensive bill? Oh, uh, well, rents, blah, 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 blah. They said, well, actually, your most expensive bill is not knowing how to make a million dollars. And that and that one that one stuck with me because you're not gonna learn things like that for free. You're either gonna pay for it in time, blood, sweat, and tears, or you're gonna pay for it in terms of like literally spending money on education. I'm not talking about a college level education. I think college prices are grossly inflated and the value is just not there in my humble opinion and i went to college and i got a degree i know but um you gotta spend money with a coach or money on books or money on courses even but i would say sticking to learning from one person that's what has helped me the most in, in my journey and that's after i try to learn from everybody on earth if you stick to one person you get a consistent set of thoughts if you go from everybody you're going to get different opinions different methods and they might all work individually but not together which i knew that earlier but this video is getting very long i'm going to cut it short right now check this out i have a book called the wealth journey i have a bunch of other products on my website i have a bunch of free products on my website I have a bunch of videos on this YouTube channel. If you have something you want to learn how to do and you're serious about it, watch my video. See what you think about them. Take notes, try what I'm saying, and if it works, fantastic. And then if you like my products, if you like my book, if you're getting results, fantastic. Do not hesitate because you're like, oh, it costs money. You think everything's supposed to be free? You think did I have to sp spend money to learn half of the stuff I learned? A lot of it I had to learn when it came to, you know what I'm saying, spending time learning and, you know, the blood sweat thing. But there's also another another aspect where I actually did spend money on books. I actually did spend hundreds of dollars a month just on mentorship from like, you know, life coaches and things like that. So I know a thing or two when it comes to what I'm talking about at this very moment. Investing in myself, regardless of if I oh 600 down the drain this month it wasn't down the drain because i learned something and i wouldn't have otherwise learned it if i didn't go through that period of spending 600 dollars. i actually made a, a, a video about that so you can check that out right here but just be careful about that if i sound like a broken record i do apologize it is well past my bedtime i do have work tonight so i will see you